We had situations where people went out in sandals and shorts and, and suddenly a snow front came in and they were in trouble and their cell phones don't work. And we've certainly had situations where people in par, are, are on interstates and, and they're between cell towers and, the, and they have an accident or they they break down and, and again, their cell phones don't work. And allowing folks to be able to connect when they don't have cell service could save lives. limitation is that is we don't have a lot of satellites up that will support it. Uh, Apple's using, I believe, Global Star, which is an existing satellite service uh, with satellites already in the air, but it's a relatively low bandwidth service and it wasn't, and the satellites weren't really designed to work with cell phones. And, and so they're, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a kludge and it's kind of amazing it works. It's like the time when the pagers came to the picture. It's basically a one-way communication, two ways communication with simple messages. You just look at it, you understand the message, you move on. And that's good for emergencies. That's good for quick information. That's good for giving you my location, latitude, attitude, then you get that information. It's not for gaming or video or internet serving. Eventually, they're going to upgrade the satellite, they're going to have better antenna, they're going to have better iPhone that will, you know, process the calls and make sure that the call is coded in a way where the satellite can understand it, deal with the delay because you're now talking about space, uh, dealing with the movement of the satellite. So there are multiple obstacles still there. Uh, it's, uh, it's a new market, it's a huge market, uh, the upfront cost will be huge.